All right, guys, this can be a tough one, um, but I think it needs to be done to get back on track. So here we go. I know you all have been following Project Big Ben, been really excited about it. I have been too um, for a long time. I took a small break from it to start training for the U.S. Open because, as I said at the beginning, uh, you know, strength is my number one goal. I still want to get stronger. I still want to get bigger. I still want to get better. And the U.S. Open is one of the biggest meets of the year. And so I wanted to make sure that I did my absolute best for that as opposed to last year where, you know, I, I was doing the bodybuilding thing and I took a couple weeks to, to peak and, and didn't perform the way I wanted to. So I was focusing on the meat, not worried about, you know, my body weight so much, trying to keep it uh, fairly stable um, because my nutrition coach, Justin Harris, uh, is pretty confident that we can do some pretty massive weight cuts, even bigger than I've done in the past. Uh, with this new diet, which is very carbohydrate heavy and therefore allows you to deplete more glycogen going into your weight cuts. So really excited about that. Had the potential to go 181. Was crushing my training, guys. Crushing. Crushing my training. I didn't share this stuff earlier. Um, I'm going to put it up in this video. But, man, I hit, I hit a 760 squat, right? This was on my heaviest day six weeks out. Hit a 760 squat. It was only supposed to be 735. I misloaded with the freaking communist plates. And, you know, I had people checking my depth from the side. It was easy. I, I, man, after I realized it was 760, I really wanted to just smash a PR right there. But uh, I held it back because I had a pull and pulled 788 or whatever the kilo equivalent is. And this is six weeks out, right? And if I can make 181, man, holy cow, the sky's the limit. Forget, you know the world record, I'd be going to break my own 198 record at a lower weight class at, at that pace. And uh, so I was, I was super psyched. And then about two weeks later, I started to develop some, some pains in my knee, which I wasn't, run, you know, less than two weeks. I guess it was about a week later. Um, started to develop some pain in my knee. This is not unusual. Uh, you guys know I've been doing some sumo work as assistants. Anytime I squat and wraps and pull sumo, I have a little bit of knee pain, so I wasn't too concerned. I was doing my physical therapy that I that I always do for that, uh, which involves the adductors. And then it just kept getting worse and worse. And eventually it started hurting after I was squatting, not just after I was pulling. And eventually it got so bad I couldn't even walk after my sessions. Like literally could not walk. Um, so at that point I realized it was bad. I took a, a light week. Um, it resolved completely, right? So it's like good to go. Go back in, one late training session, it's back. I'm like, fuck. So fortunately, I was able to uh, to get someone to help hook me up with a, a cortisone injection on short notice. And that helped enormously. Uh, enormously. But, you know, when I returned to the gym, it still wasn't 100% pain-free. Uh, it doesn't flare up to the point where I can't walk anymore. But, you know, it's, it's not good enough to, to push myself 100%. And... It, I'm pretty confident that even if it is next week, right, which is definitely a possibility, um, I, I can't get back to that strength level in, in one more week. There's just not enough time. So that's really, really disappointing. Um, but that's also how the strength sport world goes. You know, that injuries are part of the deal. And so I, I've really been struggling to deal with that mentally and physically uh you know the physical part is obvious but mentally to me this is has really been devastating and i try not to dwell on the negative but man it's it's just it's really torn me up um yeah i'm i'm not gonna go too much into it but uh you know eventually you have to you grieve right for your loss and then you move on and so i'm moving back on to project big ben and i'm really pumped about it i'll be picking back up right where we left off except with an added twist of that, I'm going to be working with uh, the legendary Mike Tuscherer on my uh, programming, which is going to involve an element of reactive training, right, which is training using RPEs uh, for bodybuilding, which Mike has written about before, but as far as I know, no one's really implemented, at least not in the traditional sense. I know John Meadows uses RPEs with his training, but his RPE scale is, is pretty unconventional for most powerlifters. Um, you know, he doesn't really count things below RPE 9 or 10, um, and it goes up to like 11 or 12. So, yeah, it's, it's uh, super intense, and this will be a, a bit of a different approach that I think could be really, really cool 
uh, and fun for me and hopefully for Mike and hopefully for y'all as well to kind of follow along with. Now, my goals still are strength related, um, but I also hope I also will compete in bodybuilding this year. Right. So I have the tribute. Um, I may also do Reebok Record Breakers to, to make up for this missed U.S. Open. Uh, and I plan to do a bodybuilding show in there as well to qualify for nationals next year, right, in 2020. Right, so I'll try. Ideally, I could hit the Tribune in August, Record Breakers in November, and then a show in December. And then the following year, maybe take a real long off season and, and see if I can get my pro card in bodybuilding, which would be pretty awesome. Uh, personally, I would like classic physique. I really love the look of the classic guys. I love the feel of the classic era. But I also realize that my build is probably better suited for um, for open. And more importantly, you know, talking to Justin, he's like, look, man, as soon as you actually let your body grow for once, 190, which is my, my weight cutoff for classic, that's, that's going to be a pipe dream, right? Like, you're going to blow up to 230, the same body fat in eight weeks, and then we're looking at 240 for for when we start to prep for the show. So, uh, obviously, 240 at my height, which is about 5'8", is, uh, is open bodybuilding. Um, it would be pretty sick to get there, but uh, at the same time, you know, oh, man, I love strength so much. I think that's always going to be my number one priority. Um, it might change, you know, going forward, but uh, for right now, that's that's the focus. So, I know this was kind of a quick one. I did just want to give you an update on my situation. Uh, and then moving forward, we'll get into some cool stuff. Um, speaking of cool stuff, one of the subjects that I do want to start being more open and, and honest with you all about, um, not that I've been dishonest so far, but I think I've avoided largely the, the use of performance enhancing drugs in sport. And I'm not sure that's a good philosophy. I, I've done it because I don't want it to impact other potential areas of my life, like my, my future in academia. But at the same time, you know, in the position that I'm in, I think it's pretty unique in the ability to, to help people who are going to use these anyway, to use them in a more safe way, hopefully, with a doctor's supervision, um, which is obviously what I do. Um, so if you have questions about that, please do post it below. Uh, I'm not going to promise that I'll answer all of them, but I, I will try and start diving deeper into this topic uh, because I, I do think it's an important one for, for people's health and longevity and happiness. So I think that wraps it up for today, y'all. I, I know it was uh, kind of one filled with ups and downs. If you're a fan of Project Big Ben, you're probably psyched. If you're hoping to see me at the Open, um, uh, trust me, you're not, you're not as crushed as I am. But onward and upward, you've got to gotta have that extraordinary resolve and, and, and keep going. So that's what I'm going to do.